Boy, I always wanted my own generator. Imagine being the only person on the block with your lights on during a power failure. Actually, that's a different ball game. To connect one to your house needs an extra doodad to prevent frying something, or yourself. Thinking of them as portable power is neat, though. But deciding what size you want can be a little tricky. When you look at the rating plate, don't say, oh, 120 volts, that sounds like enough for me. It isn't the volts that do the work, it's the watts. Now, adding up all the wattages of the things you want to run on it is a fairly good place to start as a guide, but don't get caught. Your skill saw may say it takes 10 amps. 10 amps times 120 volts, 1,200 watts. That's under normal load. Under abusive sawing or heavy going, it'll draw more. So if you're a heavy sawer, the 1,200 watt generator will let you down. Also, induction motors on things like table saws and refrigerators and furnaces need an extra zot to get them started. And the generator has to have enough guts to handle that. This little 500 watt one will only run a couple of lights and a barbecue motor and even an electric blanket, but it's, it's light enough to carry down to the lake to use with your electric drill. The big one is okay for making toast and ironing, except it's not so convenient to carry. Now, generators don't explode when you exceed their ratings, but as they get near the top of their load, they slow down a bit. So extra bucks will get you speed regulation. What for? Well, we're really used to that rock solid 60 cycle house current and things like tape recorders and turntables and clocks depend on it. So forget it. Even the ones with speed regulators are regulating the speed of a gas engine. These frequency meters are neat. They let you set the frequency to 60 cycles, sort of. But that's handy because the correct frequency comes along with the correct voltage on these little generators. Now, don't be too depressed about the lack of music in your life. Any device that's built to run on batteries, too, doesn't care about the power line frequency. Some generators have got a 12 volt DC output for charging batteries, and it's good to go for that if you're currently living with 12 volt accessories. It's still my dream to be the only kid on the block with the lights on during a power failure, but after investigating the proper way of doing that, it seems like it makes more sense to just have enough extension cords on hand to run to everything you want to run. But remember this, the generator stays outside. No matter how quiet, light, and convenient they make them, it still has an exhaust. Remember that.